Good morning. We are Connect Church. Thank you so much for allowing me into your home this morning to, to, to be a part of your Sunday morning. If you don't know, we're broadcasting from Farmington, Minnesota, part of the, the uh, greater Minneapolis-St. Paul metro uh, area. Are you getting used to this whole online thing? Yes? No? Mm, maybe. Uh, if, if you've uh, joined in or followed the governor's latest announcement this past week, you'll know that um, we're opening things up. Things are getting, we're progressing. We're one step closer to meeting together again. We're not there yet, though, so we'll be online for at least a few more weeks. Uh, but 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 hang in there. Keep uh, keep joining us online. We are here. Uh, we are here for you. I will say, if you are struggling, please reach out. Reach out to us. That is what we are here for. We can at the very least listen and pray and and chat with you. Again, a, a great way to reach out to us is through Facebook, uh, whether it's the messenger or uh, just a comment. All our contact information is on Facebook, and you can also check us out on, on our website, and all our contact information is on there as well. If you're joining us for the very first time this morning, please take a moment to let us know. Drop us a, a note in the comments. Just say, hey, this is my first time here at Connect Church. We would love that. You are important to us, and we know that you are important to Jesus as well. Um, also, uh, please take a moment to like us on Facebook and subscribe if you're if you're on YouTube this morning instead of Facebook, uh, subscribe. That way you're up to date on all the, uh, the latest videos and announcements that come out. Uh, kids, you'll have your time here shortly at 1045 a.m. Central Standard Time on the Zoom platform where you'll have a chance to interact with each other. Uh, adults, join that as well because as soon as the kids are done, we'll have a chance to chat, to hang out, and just to, to, to catch up. Uh, just a reminder too that on Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, we discuss what we've discussed this morning uh, a little bit more in depth uh, together again on the Zoom platform. If you uh, would like to join us with that and don't have the link or the password, uh, just reach out to us and we'd be happy to get you uh, the invitation and the password to our Zoom meetings. Well, again, thank you for joining us. Thank you for letting me into your home this morning. Let's get to our message and see what St. Paul has to say to us today. Hey, I'm talking to you, McFly, you Irish bug. Oh, hey, Biff. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Yeah, you got my homework finished, McFly? Uh, well, actually, I figured since it wasn't due till Monday. Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Hey, think, McFly. Think. All right. Who likes bullies? No one. I mean, even bullies don't like bullies unless they're the ones doing the bullying. Unfortunately, bullies are still out there. Who are the classic bullies of film and television? Uh, who's, who's your top choice? And feel free to drop it down in there in the comments. And you got Nelson Muntz, Scott Farkas, Biff Tannen, Regina George, Draco Malfoy. Is God a bully. Is God just one big cosmic bully who pushes everybody around, or at least tries to do so? Is he just a really big version of Nelson Muntz? Um, you know, many people believe that th that's God, just one big bully, and they don't want anything to do with him. Um, I've got to agree, if that is God, I don't want anything to do with that kind of God either. No thanks. But coming to our letter today, back to Philippians, apparently Paul didn't believe in such a God either. Instead, Paul portrays God as the opposite, the anti-bully, the complete opposite of Nelson Muntz or you know, put your favorite bully in there. So let's look. Let's read at this about this anti-bully. 
I'm going to read today from Philippians. Again, Philippians 2, that's where we are this morning. We're going to read Philippians 2, 5 through 11. And I'd invite you to turn there. It's going to be on the screen uh, today. Switching up again, I'm going to be back to the NIV, the New International Version. And I'm going to go ahead and get us started reading here today. Again, I invite you to follow along with me as we delve into see what Paul has to say to us this morning. So chapter 2, verse 5. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. At that name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. These are the words of Paul to us and to this church this morning. See, these few verses that we just read are all about Jesus, and it forms the very core or the very heart of this short letter. See, Paul solidly roots the unity that we looked at last week in Jesus Christ, in this mindset of Christ. Verse 5, have this same mindset as Jesus Christ or as Christ Jesus. Why does Paul root unity in Jesus Christ, in this mindset of Jesus? Well, because it isn't possible any other way. It's that important. So he goes on not just to recommend it, to, but to root it in Christ Jesus himself. You know, because we, we touched last week on the extreme difficulties of unity or sticking together and how tough that is. You know, that, that people who are so different and come with so many different viewpoints and backgrounds gathering together and trying to make it work in Christ. It's a hard thing to do. And so Paul roots it in this mindset of Christ. Think differently. See, so if Paul thought that unity and, and was easy and simple, he would have just left it alone after last week. But apparently Paul finds it such a difficult and, and tough task that if, 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 uh, if the church really is supposed to be this, Jesus needs to get a hold of their hearts. Okay? So there's no quicker way, I mean, and this, this is tough, there's no quicker way to determine a person's or a church's maturity in Christ than to see them when things go south, when things go sideways, when things get difficult. We, we kind of looked at that a few weeks ago. Ah. It's like a eh, eh, stab right to the heart. I mean, wh wh what am I portraying when things get tough? What is the church showing and portraying when things get tough? So Paul roots it back to Jesus Christ because it's such a difficult task. You know, when we all bow in worship of Jesus, we are humbly unified. Verse 11, every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. Verse 10, every knee bows. We put ourselves aside for Jesus. Okay? This is the mind of Christ. This is the way of Christ. This is the mindset that we all have to have or that we are to have as individuals. And is a unified church. And yes, even Caesar, who thinks he is Lord, bows as well. You know, this has to be, these few verses have to be a direct challenge to the emperor, to the Roman emperor, who at this time is, is, is Nero. Uh, emperor is God. Emperor is Lord. Emperor worship or, or cult of the emperor was at this time a flourishing and vibrant and fast-moving religion. Uh, Rome, with all its military might, has swept aside pretty much all opposition and threat. Uh, 
Rome is supreme and all powerful. You know, look at mighty Rome. It's brought peace and prosperity and justice to the known world. Let us bow down and worship. You know, we have a contrast here between the way Caesar and Rome does business and the way Jesus and his church is to do business. See, uh, Jesus doesn't wield power like Rome does or did. He doesn't exploit people or power or others or grab at it like Nero did. He doesn't threaten with a sword. Paul thinks that Jesus has something to say to those who think otherwise. Oh, Caesar, you call yourself Lord? He isn't, no matter what he thinks, says, or tries to do. You know, it's like we've got two fully loaded freight trains coming full bore at each other. This is as good as I could get. I've got Thomas the Tank and Douglas, not exactly what you'd think of as mad powerhouses coming at each other. But we've got two fully loaded freight trains bearing down at each other here on the same track, headed for you. If you're into the Grateful Dead, uh, Jesus and the Roman Empire, collision, collision course, head on collision. It's going to be the irresistible force meeting the immovable object. But Paul indicates it's, it's not even a contest. You know, Rome is going to be demolished. It's been demolished. It's been dethroned. It's fallen under the power and the authority of the risen Lord, Jesus of Nazareth. But here's the thing. Jesus has triumphed in the most unimaginable way possible by humbling himself, by pouring himself out as a servant in the obedient death on a cross. See, Jesus took the best shot that Rome, that Nero, that Satan, that evil could possibly offer, death on a cross. Jesus took it on the chin, got back up in triumph. Jesus is Lord. You know, this is a completely different counterintuitive way of thinking and living. Again, think differently. It starts with thinking differently. This is a completely different way of living as shown by Jesus of Nazareth. Not power, but serving and giving up. Not glory, but humility. Not grasping, but pouring out an open hand, not a closed fist. Now, many are going to respond and say, even some Christians are going to say, that is no way to get things done. That is no way to accomplish our goals. That's ridiculous. That's not the way the world works. You're just a naive idiot, Josh or Paul. Maybe so. Maybe so. Maybe this doesn't get things done as the world sees it. See, and this is the really tough part about all of this. It is not always evident in our world that this humble mindset, this humble way of living, this different way of living works. It often looks like defeat. It often looks like we're coming out on the losing end of things. It looks like suffering. And that's why Paul references suffering throughout this letter. Um, you know, I, I mean, Jesus did end up on the cross after all. Paul did have, if, if you take history um, at its word, end up with his head being cut off. Peter was crucified. But resurrection and vindication and justice are on the other side of things. See, Jesus, again, shows us a different way to live, a different way to life, a different humanity, a different way of being human. Thinking differently is letting Jesus blow up our expectations and our goals and our minds about what victory really looks like. 
See, the, the, remember what Paul said, the good work started in us will come to completion when we are presented, presented blameless before Jesus to the glory of God. Go back to chapter one. I, I don't know about you, but that is a giant weight off my shoulders. There's a different way to live. And there's a different way to think out there in Christ. That's supremely liberating and freeing. You know, this is the mindset that we are ha to have as Christian towards everything and towards everyone. But especially to our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ inside the church. You know, this, after, this letter, after all, was written to, to a church. So this servant mindset is, is supremely applicable to us in the church. And it's, and it's applicable to outside, but it may look different when we apply it outside the church. But that's really a whole different conversation that we could have at another time. So, but, but going back to what it's supposed to look like in the church, it's supposed to be working and looking vibrant and, and, and looking like a different way of living in the church. It's supposed to be a very visible, different way of living that everyone can see. Oh, uh, and, and, and why? Why is it supposed to actually work within the church? Because every single person has this mindset. Everybody is saying within the church, no, after you. No, after you. No, you have, no, at, please, after you. No, not my rights, but yours. And then the other person says back, no, please, not my rights, but yours. And everybody's doing that because everybody has the mindset of Jesus Christ. Everybody is thinking differently. You know, and if it doesn't work within the church, if it's not working, it's not the way, it's not the way of Christ, the way of thinking that's flawed. It's our application of it. You know, it, it, it hasn't gotten a hold of us yet. It hasn't transformed our minds and our hearts and our way of thinking. Okay, we, we've got to come back to it. We've got to say, all right, uh, we're, we're still at odds, but, but let's take a step back. Let's think again. Let's approach this differently. Let's allow the spirit to work. Let, let's, let's give a second and pray and let our minds be shaped by Jesus and by the spirit. And we'll come at it again. I've got to think how Jesus would have done it. I've got to think like a servant slave. Jesus shows us a different way to live, a different way of life. A different humanity. All right. What's your favorite Disney movie? I'm going to give you a moment. I'm going to, I'm going to pause because it's hard to think and to type at the same time. I'm going to give you a moment. What's your favorite Disney movie? Drop it down in the comments for us. Share it. I'm going to give you five seconds. One. Two. Well, more than five seconds. Three. Four. Five. That's the famous Josh Long Count. Uh, if you're into boxing, okay? Uh, what's your favorite Disney movie? Mary Poppins? The Prince and the Frog? Frozen? The Lion King? Personally, I've always been partial to Aladdin. Uh, I love the original animated version, but I really like the new one with, uh, with Will Smith and others. That was really good as well. What's the great part about Disney's Aladdin? Now, there's lots of great parts. Uh, but, but first, before I get to that, what are Aladdin's three wishes? All right. Quiz time. I think I asked this a couple years ago, too. I don't know. If it should, you should know the answer. One, to be a prince, right? Two, to be saved from drowning and to have G the genie save his life. Three, and the best wish of them all, the wish that makes the whole movie, in my opinion. What is it? To set the genie free. In a small way, Aladdin reflects the mind of Christ. He thinks differently. He shows us a different way to be human. He gives to others. You know, I haven't been watching network TV really at all. I, I don't even, I can't even remember the last time I watched a network television or had the, uh, the antenna TV on. Um, and I am glad. I'll tell you why. Because I, I this is an election year, and I haven't been subjected to all those annoying political ads. Is anybody with me? Can anybody give me a, a thumbs up 
uh, down below. Is anybody with me? Or anybody tired? Anybody hate those political ads? Who gets tired of all the politics? Whether politics in Washington or at work or in your families or in the church. Oh, that's a tough one too. Or in any group or organization. Who gets tired of the politics? Now the I sure do. See, the assumption seems to be wherever the politics are rearing its head is that if only we could get the right person in power, whatever that looks like. If any, if only we could get the right people making the decisions, then we could really do something and affect change. And I'll be I'll be honest, I, I fall prey to that. But 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 what if everybody's making the same wrong assumptions? The same mistake, just from the opposite direction. And that's at the thinking that obtaining power is the path to victory. Maybe that's way off base. I, I don't know. But it's something worth thinking about. See, Jesus shows us a different way to live, a different way of life, a different humanity. It's a way of humble service, not grabbing, but pouring out of our very selves. A faithfulness in the face of suffering. In this way, we, we share in this victory, vindication, and exaltation of Jesus, of Christ. So how is your life? How is my life? How is the life of this church? Uh, if you're not a part of Connect Church, the, the, hopefully the life of the, 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 your church that you're involved in going to be shaped and transformed by these words of Paul this morning. How are you going to have the mindset of Jesus Christ as a humble servant? How are you going to think differently? You know, right now is such a great time to be a servant and to consider the needs of others. You know, how, how are we going to do that? Considering the needs, remember, the, the needs of the elderly, the most vulnerable, the unemployed, the small business owners, those who are hurting financially, those who are hurting emotionally. How do we think? differently what walls have been built up between us and divide us what keeps us from unifying in christ as christians and as a church what walls need to be torn down by the humble servant way of jesus christ now think about the the, the racism and, and, and racial issues intentional or unintentional you know those are walls Politics are a massive wall in America right now. In the church, economic disparity is a wall that divides us. Our schedules divide us. Busyness is a wall. That's kind of being torn down among some of us. Age often separates us. Fear is a wall that separates us. But all of these can bow down to Jesus and be torn down by Jesus of Nazareth and by the humble mindset that he gives us and shows us. Linking, linking with last week, humility tears down these walls. Again, reach out to somebody this week. Reach out to somebody that's different than you. How can I hear the spirit speaking through that other person that's different? How can I serve that different person with the servant attitude of Jesus Christ? How can I think differently? Dallas Willard, um, who focuses or focused on Christian formation, he's kind of an expert in Christian formation, encourages us to turn our minds over to Jesus Christ by devoting ourselves to Jesus' wisdom, by reading scripture, by learning the history of other Christians, by listening and hearing their stories, by learning the history of the Christian faith. By evaluating and thinking through the culture around us, what is good? What can be appreciated in our culture? What isn't so good? What needs to be rethought or rejected? What is the path of Jesus Christ, the humble servant? See, Jesus of Nazareth and this way of life, this new way of thinking, has to confront everything that we hold dear. And I'll... It, it might look like the freight train's crashing sometimes. Sometimes not. Listen to what Henry Nouwen writes. Prayer is such a radical act 
because it requires us to criticize our whole way of being in the world, to lay down our old selves and accept our new selves, a very Pauline, a very St. Paul way of, of, of thinking, Un, uh, unquote, without that Pauline thing. Pray that this week, pray that God would change our minds, that we would have the minds of the humble servant of Jesus Christ. Again, Jesus shows us a different way to live, a different way to think, a different way of life, a different way of being human. Have this mindset among you. Think differently. It will be your freedom for you in Christ, for us as a church in Jesus Christ. I'm going to end this this morning with a prayer, all right? And I want to give every one of us this morning, including myself, the opportunity to pray for the mind of Christ, that everything that we hold dear be confronted with this new way of thinking, all right? Serve, give up, not power, but humility, not grasping, but pouring out, not glory, but Jesus, an open hand, not a closed fist. This is the mindset and the way of Christ. This is the path that Paul lays before us. Let's pray. Dear Lord, Lord, we, we take a moment to open our hearts and our minds to you. Transform us. May it be our eager desire to have this new way of life, this new way of thinking in us as individuals and as a church. May this be our heart's deepest desire. We give over things that divide us, that, that erect walls, that separate us from each other and from you. And we seek to adopt your way of thinking, your way of life, your path. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you pray that, if that is your desire, reach out to us. Let us know. There's some next steps and things we can do to, to help you out. But reach out to us. Drop us a line in below. Drop us a comment. Feel free to contact the church. Again, our contact information is all over Facebook. Um, please do that. Kids, we will see you shortly, 1045 a.m. on Zoom. The link will be below. Uh, adults, hop on there too. We will have a chance to chat, a chance just to ke catch up and hang out on Zoom after that. Join us Wednesday, 7 o'clock Central Standard Time, and we will delve into this a little bit more in depth and get your thoughts and questions and ideas on this. Until then, have this mindset of Christ among you. Blessings.